we want to talk about Top Gun, but first, I mean, we have to. Yeah. Tomcat Hornet. You have, if I read your bio correctly, a thousand hours or more in each. And so everybody loves the Tomcat. I want to be the first guy, but I wasn't. You, uh, well, there nobody a, ever There's remembers. always a guy that beats yeah, you, you yeah. know. But, I mean, come on. Um, I assume you flew the A's because that was probably a while back as well, far as the yeah, it's, Tomcats. The A model, yeah, my Tomcat time. So let's just sandwich the career. Okay. Five years, Tomcats, all F-14 A's. Yeah. Okay. Then it was like, which lot are you flying? You know, so there were differences in, in Tomcats. Never bomb dropping, though. Purely fighter. Okay. Then the next 17 years were in the F-18. Then the end of my career, I was a Tomcat and Hornet guy. As you a came keg. back to it? Wow. Yeah, I was day-night qualified in the F-14D, the Super Tomcat, oh and gosh. the Hornet. Oh and gosh. you know what? Most of my combat time, and I'll, I'll honestly tell you, you're going to be in combat and they're shooting at you. Boy, it's be good to be in a combat in an F-14 to go fast, and the other dude is head down running the laser. And it's like, so most of my bomb dropping, I'd go, ah, put me in a Tomcat, please. <laughs> <laughs> so well, when you're the air wing commander, you can yeah, usually uh, get your choice. Yeah, you can get your choice. But just as far as going out, flying around, maybe BFM, but maybe just goofing, yeah. chasing clouds. I don't know. Compare the two, or maybe contrast the two. Yeah, I'll give uh, you. A, you know, there's what do we say in the Top Gun business? Goods and others. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, the Hornet. I always here's what I would tell guys about the difference between the two platforms. When I was flying F-14As, I'd call it a coin toss. Were you going to launch or were you going down? <laughs> we spared every single mission. Uh, if there were two planes, two and a spare. So you'd always go through a brief. There was a good chance you were going to go flying. Okay? If you were the spare. If you were the spare yeah. and Tomcat. F-18, we didn't spare. Our first squadrons were like, we were 98%. They were brand new. Fully mission capable, brand new. Yeah. They, but they were reliable too. Mm. The Tomcat had reliability problems, quite frankly. So I call one an analog platform, one a digital platform, and you know which one's which. Now, the D was more reliable, but you know it was probably better than our A models. Uh, strengths, Tomcat, particularly the D. And I always, people say, how fast does it go? And I said, I did this one time. I got level at 10,000 feet. I slowed up to about 150, you know, so flaps gonna come down, uh, uh. so I'm level, Plug in the blowers. I want you to make a guess. 150 to 610. What amount of time would that take? 30 seconds. 9.7. <laughs> so it was, now, it didn't have any tanks on it, ah. but it was an amazingly fast airplane. And so, uh, you know, I do have one little story as JOs, but I'll, I'll tell you later, is how fast did I ever go? People always ask that question. Yeah, yeah. I go, oh, okay. I'll did you repeat straight. the test, though? Sorry to interrupt. In the Hornet? Because I'm I, guessing... You know what? I never did, because it's like, you know, it was just not that as fast. <laughs> right. So when an F-18, and, you know, we're I was the CO at Top Gun when we had F-16Ns, a really fast airplane with the F-110 engine, 27,000 pounds of thrust. When they met a Hornet head-on, and a guy decided he was going to try to leave in an F-18 with single center line, you're in trouble. Not happening. Because that F-16 would go up to 800 indicated, and so they chase you down. And they, all the instructors go, it's like a little dog. Whoop, 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 whoop. And they, you just turn around and go, uh-oh, i got to turn back into this guy because <laughs> they just eat you up. They'd have 240 yeah. overtake. From behind you, so you had to turn and fight. That was all there was to it. Right. So, so when you compare the two, acceleration, uh, top end speeds, the Hornet was good at taking uh, and speed and using it with altitude, and it was pretty efficient up high. But we were always limited with, you know, we we're carrying fifteen thousand double bubble mm -hmm. in a in a standard uh, F eighteen C model. So it was, you know, but it was very reliable, and it was way easier to land on the boat. Let's say that. Compare those two. Yeah. As an ensign or a lieutenant JG, I'll tell you what, that the Tomcat's a handful of airplane to land on the boat. The D was just about as hard. It had some different cues and a little better HUD and you know, an auto throttle. And the auto throttles were always horrible in the Tomcats. The auto throttle in the Hornet was I called it the primary method of landing. I told my maintenance guys, if the auto throttle's not up, that airplane's <laughs> down. And they go, Oh, they'll be up if you know the skipper says that. So yeah, yeah. So we, we uh, 
you know, you know, the primary sure. land, way of landing is, you know, auto throttles. Uh, it was for me anybody landing, that yeah. would land manually. All right, so, so both ahead. are on the line. You're going to take one, let's say, to an air show. Yeah. Which one are you going to jump in? Well, what's your purpose? You know, uh, you... <laughs> park, park and meet people. Uh, Tomcat was always fun if it All was right. if it was slicked down. Yeah, the, yeah. The, they, here's a little aside. The tanks were never made for combat and all that. Those were called ferry tanks. And then once they started putting them on, they go, oh, we can get longer cycles. Uh, so it was kind of controversial at the beginning. As to Tomcats normally flew with no tanks. In, in When VF-1 and 2, 14 and 32, all those new, squad, new Tomcat squadrons, they didn't fly with tanks for a long time. And then it was like, uh-oh, now we go out for an hour and 45 cycle, the tanks are on. And the airplane didn't maneuver all that well with those tanks. Yeah. A lot of drag, plus the Phoenix rails were draggy. So, yeah. Yeah. If I was to fight, though, one-on-one, -on -one, if a guy was really good, like Dale Snodgrass, you know, he would give anybody a hard time, in particular if it was a B model, you know, with the bigger engines or mm -hmm. a D. I think a Tomcat can give any Hornet a run. Uh, but, you know, a Hornet's way better in the phone booth, as you and I know. The slow fight, oh, yeah. gun at a guy, going a high angle of attack. The F, and the other part of the F-14 is this. I want I want you, I wanted to discuss these two aspects. Number one, if it was a B or a D, later in the the time frame, the airplane was blowing up. Okay, I don't know if you ever what knew do you mean that. Blowing up, the engine would come apart. Really? So, you well, know, hold on. The A was always notorious for stalls. Being, stalling. Yeah. So it stalled, but it didn't blow up on you. Okay. <laughs> Never heard this. Oh yeah, we've <clears throat> lost several Tomcats. And until a crew from, I think it was uh, the Discovery Channel, was on one of the ships. Oh, yeah, yeah. The F-31. going by. They had a high power camera. They zoomed in, and they could see exactly, because no one knew why was it coming apart. And, you know, I will say this, that the guy that was lost was one of my fellow commanding officers when we were COs together, Scooter Lamoureux, Scotty. His dad was an F-8 pilot. You know, rest in peace. He was the nicest guy. He was in the back seat when that thing blew up. And his wife still lives here in San Diego. It, and there so, was film of that from Discovery? Because I'm thinking film. of one, I think I've seen it, where I'm pretty it does certain it was that one flyby. because okay. they came by and it was and it was on a flyby, high dynamic, high Q as we mm. call it, maybe 1.2 or something, thing came apart. Oh, wow. And just instantly both of them gone. But I believe there were two that that happened to. I don't know if the other one was a B or not, but it was a 110 engine, mm -hmm. and it was some sort of a liner that was in it, and they go, oh, this is why. It's not a containment of the compressor blades and all mm -hmm. that, but, you know, I think I've got most of that accurate. Yeah, well, so, this is dangerous business, so you have it to is. assume some level so, of risk. You know, uh, so there's some big differences. So you, you had that, and then you always had the aspect of, if you pushed it too far, that thing would get in a spin, and if it got in a spin, there's somebody that, you know, alluded to the fact they don't know if it was really post all gyration or they actually got it out of a spin. But I, it was one of my students that was in the FRS, and he later was a Top Gun instructor. But I think he got into a spin, and he actually got it out of a spin. So uh, wow. pretty certain that he got it out. But as far as all the other guys, there were a lot of ejections in flat spins. Yeah. And the movie, the first movie, when Goose hits the canopy, that was accurate. That's right. Because Snakes you had to, part show. of the procedure yeah. of ejecting was to blow the canopy, mm -hmm. look up, is it still there in the dead air above you? Then you eject. Boy, that so, assumes a lot of wherewithal in the moment. It does. And so th here's the point. How good do you feel about taking that thing? We used to take it to zero airspeed all the time. Then it became a prohibited maneuver because somebody went into a spin. Because if you did it right, you came straight back down, and then all that air would go up, and the engine would stall. So they go, oh, don't do it. We all love doing it. You'd watch the yaw string go the opposite way. You know, it was a yaw string on the nose, which yeah, is funny. Yeah, you see that in Final Countdown, whenever they're yeah, showing the... Uh, the yaw string. Uh, yeah. It'd be a piece of parachute cord. <laughs> so you, that's how you took the yaw out. Yeah, because if it was off to the side, yeah, you, you, go, you had you, some side you got, slip. Yeah, side slip. So we'd come back down, but then they go, uh, somebody just went in a spin and had to eject from that. No more zero airspeed tail slides. Because you didn't know if the airplane was coming over here. Or going over there. Isn't that part of the fun? It was fun. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> if you did just right, you went about 10,000 feet backwards downhill. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, oh, the F-22 can do that now, but it can come I know, out just I fine. know, but yeah. it comes out good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It does a 250-foot loop, too. Whole you know? difference. Yeah, yeah, true. Whole different story. All right, so, yeah, again, everyone loves the Tomcat. I never flew oh, yeah. it, but I, I had a chance to the fly Turkish, with it. And the Turkish Oh, absolutely. It's it was a handful of airplanes. 
We had a whole podcast about it, a whole yeah. series. Of and, the, and the roll, so. roll was sloppy because it was yeah. rolling with differential tail and spoilers. And right? spoilers. Yeah. You know, yeah. spoilers are bad. Grumman liked that. Yeah, we oh, talked yeah. about that oh, in yeah. our episodes too. 